Welcome back, Chem 101 students, uh, to week 7. This week we're going to be talking about chemical reactions and chemical equations. So uh, we'll start by talking about how to write down chemical equations and how to do what's called balancing those equations, which is making sure that the atoms that are produced are the same as the atoms that we started with, just rearranged and, and bonded together in a different way. So uh, a chemical equation looks like this. So we have before the reaction, and then we have an arrow, and we have after the reaction. So what we have before the reaction, these are called reactants. And what we have after the reaction, we call them products. And so below, we have an example of a chemical equation. It's four lithium atoms react with one oxygen molecule and make two units of lithium oxide, uh, an ionic compound. So uh, this represents a chemical change or a chemical reaction. So what is going on here when the chemical reaction happens? And what are these numbers that we have in orange? Uh, that's what we're going to talk about here. So uh, we have the same reaction copied down here. And what we have written in front of the lithium atoms here is a 4. We have a 4 because that indicates that we have to start with 4 lithium atoms. And these are represented by their Lewis structure with the dot. Lithium being group 1 has one dot here. And then for oxygen, we have the lithium, the, the Lewis structure of the oxygen molecule. Now we haven't talked about how to make Lewis structures of molecules yet, but we will. You can see that there's a double line here between these two oxygen atoms. This indicates what's known as a double covalent bond. And we'll talk about those kinds of covalent bonds as we move forward. Uh, and then there are little dots here to represent the, ele the valence electrons of the oxygen. Notice that there are two oxygen atoms here to begin with in, uh, in the one oxygen molecule. Then at the end, we get two formula units of lithium oxide. And so these are separated here by this line. And so in each unit of lithium oxide, we have two lithium ions, each are positive one here. And we have one oxide anion, one oxide negative ion, that's negative two. Uh, so this represents one unit of lithium oxide. And then there's a second. But notice what happens here. Altogether, there are four lithium atoms on the left and there are four lithium ions on the right. And then we have two oxygen atoms on the left, and then we have two ox oxide ions on the right. So in a chemical reaction, what happens is that the atoms are not destroyed or no new atoms are produced. What happens is that they become bonded to each other in a different way. Notice we still ha we have four lithium atoms at the beginning. We still have four lithium atoms at the end. They're in the form of ions now, but they're still there. And also we started with uh, an oxygen molecule with two oxygen atoms in it. And in the end, we have two oxide ions. These atoms are all still there. They're just now bonded in this ionic compound. And so there's the same atoms on each side. They're just bonded differently. So. What, what we can say here is four lithium atoms react with one oxygen molecule and produce two lithium oxide units here. The coefficients tell us how many of each atom that we have or how many of each uh, ionic compound unit or molecule that we have at the end. It's like a recipe. So if you are doing, you know, if you're uh, making a, a sandwich or something, you know, you might have uh, one slice of cheese and, and maybe four pickles or something in it uh, and and uh, and that will make so many sandwiches or something uh, so it very is very much like a recipe but it's a recipe that has to do with atoms and molecules instead of large microscopic things so usually or a lot of the times when we are shown a chemical equation or writing one down we don't have those coefficients already there. So we have to put them in. And so we put in the coefficients to make sure that the atoms that we start with are the atoms that we end with. Because again, in a chemical reaction, the atoms are not lost or gained. They're just 
rearranged and they bond to each other in a different way. And so I'm going to give you a few tips on how you can do this. Really, uh, determining these coefficients is a trial and error kind of guessing process. But if you use the tips that I show you, you can get to the answer more quickly. and You don't have to do a random guesses. So the first tip I'm gonna tell you about balancing chemical equations is that any element that is found in more than one compound on the same side, do that last. These are going to be the ones that are hardest to balance. And what you're going to find is that oftentimes, if you leave them for the end, they will work themselves out and they'll be balanced at the end. Okay. So often it's oxygen and hydrogen uh, that are the ones that you appear more than once. Not always, but a lot of the times. Okay. Um, so watch out for that. Uh, so here's an example where oxygen is the one that's appearing more than once on one side because on this side there's oxygen in this uh, dichlorine pentaoxide molecule and there's an oxygen in this water molecule. And so we're going to want to try to balance oxygen last here. Uh, so now when we look at this uh, we should be counting here how many atoms of each type that we have. So what you can do is you can kind of set up uh, a table on the side or underneath if you want. I'm going to set it up over here. And I'm going to be counting my chlorine atoms on the left side. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to think about what I have for the, uh, for the coefficient here. And I'm going to make this one red. Okay. And I'm going to make the coefficient here blue so that I can tell them apart and on the other side I'll make this one blue too uh, so what we're trying to do is make sure that we have the same atoms on each side so and I'm gonna make this line black instead so that it doesn't get confused with my other colors here okay so if I have uh, a one here we're going to assume we have ones in all these places if no number is written there you can assume a one so let's say I have a one here I'm going to write it in as a one you don't have to write a one uh, often it's left off but I'm going to write it in so here for my uh, chlorine oops, I'm going to erase this real quick What I wanted to want to do, what I'm going to want to do is count up all my atoms. So I'm going to be counting up my chlorine atoms. And I'm going to be counting up my hydrogen atoms. And I'm going to be counting up my oxygen atoms. And I want to have a count for all of these on both sides. Chlorine, uh, hydrogen, oxygen. Okay. And so to count up my chlorine atoms, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red coefficient, which I've underlined here red, and I'm going to multiply that times 2. Because for every one of these Cl2O5s that I have, each one contains two chlorine atoms. So if I have one of them, I have 1 times 2, or two chlorine atoms. That's the case here, for now at least. Now when you do this, make sure to use a pencil because you might be doing some erasing. You might change these numbers. You're guessing. So make sure to, to uh, use a pencil so that you can change them if you decide to later. So what this means now is that I have two chlorine atoms, two chlorine atoms on the left side. Now if I want to have two chlorine atoms on the right side, so on the right side, I'm having a blue coefficient here. So each one of these HClO3 or chloric acids has one chlorine atom. Okay, So whatever is my coefficient here, I'll be multiplying it times 1 to get my number of chlorine atoms. So what I would want to do here is I want to put a 2 in this spot because if I have 2 times 1, that is going to give me 2 chlorine atoms and then I will have the same number of chlorine atoms on each side. Now notice, let's take a look now for our hydrogen. 
So the hydrogen here on this side depends on the blue coefficient on the left side. That one currently uh, is one, okay? So I can put that in here, one. I might have to change it later. It's possible that I will have to change it. Uh, and then each one of these waters contains two hydrogens. So my number of hydrogens is one times two, which is two. Then on the right side, I have my blue coefficient on the right side, my blue coefficient on the right side. And that number is going to be times, well, each one of these has one hydrogen. It's not written there, but it has one hydrogen here. And so it will be my blue coefficient here times one, which is two. So I have two hydrogens on the left and two hydrogens on the right, which means my hydrogen atoms are now balanced. Last, uh, I have to look at my oxygens. And on the right side, I'm going to do the right side because it's a little bit simpler. There's only one compound. My oxygens also depend on what the blue coefficient is. And the blue coefficient happens to be two. However, each one of these has three oxygen atoms. So if I have two of them, I could write out two of them if I wanted to, just on the side here so I can see it, HClO3, HClO3. If I have two of them, that's what I mean. I've got two of these. And so my number of oxygen atoms is three and three, or six. The easy way to do that is to say two times three is six. So we're gonna do two, and then we do times three. So basically, what we have is here, this number is the coefficient. And this number here is the subscript. And we multiply them and that tells us how many atoms we have. So this is gonna be six oxygen atoms on the right. Now, on the left, uh, my cat is trying to pull my mouse down. Oh my gosh. Uh, on the left here, uh, we're, we have oxygen that depends on both what the red coefficient here is and what the blue coefficient is on the left. And so we're going to have to add those together. So it's going to be the red coefficient times 5 because there's a 5 here in the Cl205. So it's going to be times 5. And this red one is a 1. So it'll be 1 times 5, which is 5 oxygens. But we have to add to that, so we're going to add to this now the blue coefficient uh, here, which is also 1, times the subscript here for the oxygen, which is 1. Meaning we have one water molecule, and that one water molecule has one oxygen atom in it. And so 1 times 1, that is 1. And so now we're going to add these together. So we add these together at 5 plus 1, that gives us 6 oxygens altogether. And the 6 is the same as the 6. So at this point, we are all balanced. And so just to recap what I did here, I saw that there were two oxygens. Uh, there was oxygens in this compound and the oxygens in that compound. So I decided I was going to be balancing the oxygens last. So I started by balancing the chlorines at first. So what I did was I put a two right there. I put two, there were two chlorines on the left, so I put a two here on the right, and that balanced out my chlorines, okay? And then I went to balance my hydrogens, and they were already balanced. Two times one, two hydrogens, and one times two, two hydrogens. So there's two hydrogens on each side. One water with two hydrogens, and then two of these HClO3s with two hydrogens. Finally, there were six oxygens on each side. Five from this Cl205, and one from the water. And, so, and then on this side, we had two times three, six oxygens. And so we were balanced. And so that's the recap of what we did. Now, uh, I, I'm going to show you each time using a table like this. There's lots of different ways that you can count atoms. If you watch some other people's videos, they might do it a little bit different way. I've tried lots of different ways over the years. It seems like my students like this way the best. Uh, but 
Um, really, it's just a matter of counting the atoms on each side. And the way you do that is by multiplying the, co the coefficient here times the subscript to get how many atoms. Uh, and if it appears in more than one place, you have to add the atoms together on that side. Now here's another one, another problem. If, um, if you're watching the video, you may want to pause this and try this without my help here uh, and see if you can get it because this one is very similar to the last one. So pause, give it a shot. Okay, restarting the video. So what we see here is that like the last one, oxygen appears twice on the left side. So we want to balance the oxygen last. Again, we can start by balancing the chlorines here. So again, we can start counting our atoms. Uh, and I, I, again, I like to uh, make these different colors here uh, if I can. So uh, I would make maybe this one red here and this one blue, and then you can have different colors on the other side. I can make this one red or blue. I'll just make it red, I guess. Okay, and then I make a little chart. I divide everything down the middle here, and I'm counting my chlorines, uh, my hydrogens, and my oxygens, and I'm doing the same here. Chlorine, hydrogens, oxygens, uh, and so I'll use my red coefficient for the chlorine. I'll use my blue coefficient for the for the hydrogen, and then my oxygen needs to use the red coefficient and the blue coefficient, okay? And for the chlorine, it's gonna be the red coefficient times a sub subscript, which is two. And then for the hydrogen, it's gonna be the blue co coefficient here times the subscript for the hydrogen, which is two. Then for the oxygen, it's going to be the red coefficient here times 7 plus the blue coefficient times the subscript here, which is 1. Then for the chlor chlorine on this side, it, uh, these will all depend on the red coefficient because that's the only one there is. For the chlorine on this side, it's going to be the red coefficient times 1. For the hydrogen, it's, it's because there's a one here not written, for the hydrogen, it's gonna be the red coefficient times one. Again, coefficient here is, or the subscript here is one. For the oxygen, it's gonna be the red coefficient times four, because the subscript here is four. And so, uh, now we can start to guess. Uh, and you can always start by putting a one somewhere. I like to look at, you know, if, I, if this is one here, for the red one, and this is one. Which side has more chlorines? Oh, the left side has two, but this side only has one. So I would want to try to make this one one. So I'll make this one one, and when I multiply it by two, that gives me two chlorines. Two chlorines here. And so now I want to have two chlorines on the right side, so maybe I make this one two here. So I put a two, two times one, that gives me also two chlorines on this side. And then for the hydrogen, uh, let's look. Right now I have a one. I can assume that I have a one right now. We're just guessing, right? Uh, but if I do have a one, and I may have to change it later, but for now I have, uh, I have a one. And so that gives me one times two or two hydrogens. And what this means is that we have one water molecule, and that one water molecule has two hydrogen atoms. Uh, next, we've got a two here on our red coefficient, so I'm just going to fill that in here. And two times one for the hydrogen, that gives me two hydrogens. So I appear to be balanced on the hydrogens here. There are two hydrogens on each side. Okay, uh, how many oxygens are on each side? Well, let's fill in our coefficients. So for now, we have a one here for the red one, and we have a one for the blue one. So we have one times seven, which is seven, 
plus one times one, which is one. So that's a total of eight oxygens. And then for the red coefficient on the right side, we've got two, and two times four is eight oxygens. So we are actually all balanced with eight oxygens on each side. And so uh, now we have balanced our, our equation. Uh, so again, this is a little bit of a guessing game. We're guessing. Uh, I do like to, you know, so that I guess right the first time, I try to pay, to pay attention to if everything was one, who has less atoms? Because then you can up the number to increase the number of atoms and try to balance them out. Uh, so you can kind of start by assuming everything is one and then see where you can go from there in order to increase this. Again, for that reason, because we're kind of guessing, uh, you do want to use a pencil so that you can erase your old guesses and put in new ones. But my tip to help you guess is that if you see the same atom in two different compounds or more on one side, go for that one last. Did you notice how we had already figured out the coefficients and we just plug them in for the, for counting the oxygens and they were already done which happens a lot of the times when you have one that's particularly difficult uh, because it appears in more than one place so save that one for later and then uh, you can balance the equation easier and so that's our balanced equation and that was the oxygens we counted the oxygens up eight on each side okay So here's another one, a little bit more involved. It's, it still will benefit from using tip one. If we look, we can see that on the right side here, we have oxygen in more than one place. So we want to be careful about uh, doing oxygen. We want to do that one last. So we're going to be counting up our atoms. So again, we draw a line here and we count up our atoms on both sides. This time the atoms we're counting are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay, and I'm gonna give my coefficients here colors again. So I'm gonna make this one red and this one blue. And I'm gonna make this one red and this one blue. And so my carbon is only my carbon is only located in the C3H8, so it's only going to depend on the red coefficient here. And my hydrogen uh, is also only in the C3H8, so it's only going to depend on the red coefficient. My oxygen is only in the O2, so it's only going to depend on the blue coefficient. And in terms of what I'm going to be multiplying by, we multiply by the subscripts. So for carbon, it's going to be this coefficient times the subscript 3, times 3. For hydrogen, it's going to be this red coefficient times this subscript 8, times 8. And for the oxygen, it's going to be the blue coefficient times the subscript 2, times 2. Now on the right side, my carbon is only in the CO2, so it's only going to depend on my red coefficient. The hydrogen is only in the water here, so that's only going to depend on my blue coefficient. And the oxygen is both in the red and in the blue here, and the CO2 and in the water, so it's going to depend on the red coefficient and the blue coefficient. And in terms of what we're going to multiply times, we look at the subscript. So we multiply this coefficient times 1, times 1. For the hydrogen, we're going to multiply the blue coefficient times 2. And then for the oxygen, we're going to multiply the red coefficient times the subscript here, 2. And we're going to add that to the blue coefficient times 1. Okay. So now, again, I do like to kind of pretend at first that they're all 1s. If this were a 1 here, then the carbon would be 1 times 3. That would be 3. But if this were a 1 here, the carbon would be 1 times 1. That's only 1. So 
I'm definitely going to want a bigger number for this one to balance things out. So I'm going to start by guessing that the red coefficient on the left side is 1. So I'm going to say 1 times 3, that gives me 3 carbon atoms. Okay. So on the right, if I want to balance my carbons, then I'm going to have to have a 3 for my red coefficient because 3 times 1 will give me 3 carbons, like that. Now for hydrogen, here we've decided that our red coefficient is 1, so I'm just going to fill that in here and count how many hydrogens that gives me. It's going to be 1 times 8, so that's going to give me 8 hydrogens. Then in terms of the right side here, I have not decided on my blue coefficient yet. If it were 1, we'd have 1 times 2, four, uh, 2 hydrogens, but we need to have 8 hydrogens. So the number we have to put in for the blue coefficient to have 8 hydrogens will be a, a 4. And so if we put a 4 here, that will give us 8 hydrogens. And so now we are balanced on the hydrogens. So this is how we got three carbons on this side. This is how we got eight hydrogens on this side. Last, we're going to try to balance out the oxygens. Uh, we've already figured out our red and blue coefficients here. And so we can plug these in on the right. The problem is on the left, we haven't figured out our blue coefficient. So on the right side, we should plug in our red and blue coefficient and so we get 3 times 2 which is 6 plus 4 times 1 which is 4 so that's a total of 10 oxygen atoms 10 oxygens it's kind of hard to see I like to put a line through my zeros here when I'm doing this so that you can differentiate them between a 0 and an O so we have to figure out which number we would need for the blue coefficient to have 10 oxygens. Well, it would be 5 times 2 is 10 oxygens. So we want to put a 5 here, and that will give us 10 oxygens. Finally balance the oxygens, and we did, and we had 10 of them. And so our coefficients are 1, 5, 3, and 4. And we are balanced. Three carbons on each side, one times three, three times one, eight hydrogens on each side, one times eight on the left, four times two on the right, and ten oxygens on each side, five times two on the left, and then three times two is six, plus four times one, that's ten. And we're balanced. Okay, so now for tip number two, when an element is uh, in an odd number on one side and an even number on the other, you will double the one with the odd coefficient. So sometimes it will happen that on one side, no matter what coefficient you put, you'll have an even number of atoms. But on the other side, it's possible that you could have an odd number. So you often have to fix that problem by changing a lot of your numbers. And so we'll, we'll look at an example of how this might happen. If you have balanced other elements before you notice that you have this even odd problem, you just double everything that you've already balanced so far and that will fix your problem. So let's look at an example here. Now this is an example where we're gonna have an even odd problem. And let's say that we don't notice that we have an even odd problem right away, okay? Uh, so here we're going to be balancing uh, this. So I'll draw my little line in the middle and I'll put uh, aluminum and oxygen here and aluminum and oxygen here. These are the atoms that we're balancing. Okay, so uh, let's say but we just decide we want to balance the aluminum first, okay? I'm going to make this the red coefficient here, and this one the blue one, and then this one will be a red one. So for the aluminum, it will be 
the red coefficient times its subscript, which is one. So I'll put in uh, times one there. And then for the oxygen, it will be the blue coefficient times its subscript, which is two. So it'll be times two, oops, times two. And then on the right side, these both depend on the red coefficient. That's the only one there is. And so for the aluminum, it'll be that red coefficient times its subscript two times two. And for the oxygen, it will be the red coefficient times its subscript three. Now, we do have an even odd problem. Uh, you can recognize it because if you look here, if this were a one, then we'll have three oxygens. But on the left side here, if we put a one, we'll have two oxygens. But if we have a two, we'll have two times two, we'll have four oxygens. So there's no way to have three oxygens on the left side. So that tells us right away that we have an even odd problem. But let's say that you didn't notice it right away, okay? Like, like we just did just now. Let's say you say, okay, I'm just gonna balance my aluminums first. And I'm gonna guess that I have a, uh, well, let's see, if I have a one here, then I'll have one times two, two aluminums. So I guess that I've got two aluminums here. And so that means if I wanna have two aluminums on the left, I would need to have a two for this coefficient, so I'll have two times one. That will give me two aluminums. But then when I try to balance the oxygens, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. So I already figured out these red coefficients, but I can't get three oxygens here. So here this would be one times three, three oxygens, but if I put a one here, I'll have one times two, two oxygens, but if I have a two, of two times two, four oxygens. So what I can do is if I discover it in the middle, I don't gotta start over. All I gotta do is take the ones I've balanced already and double them. So I'm gonna erase this two and I'm gonna turn it into a four instead. So I'm gonna make this a four. So that would give me four aluminums. And I'm going to erase this one and make it a two. So I'm doubling what I've done already. So that will give me two times two, four aluminums. Okay, so now I've doubled my coefficients and, and maybe that will fix, usually that will fix your even odd problem. Okay, so uh, now that I've got two here, I don't know the blue one yet, but I've got a two here. I'm gonna put it in for my red one. And that gives me two times three, which is six oxygens. So the number I need for my blue coefficient is the number that will multiply with two to give me six oxygens. That would be three. It's three times two, six oxygens. And so I was able, even though I didn't recognize the even odd problem right away, I was able to fix it in the middle because I doubled my, my coefficients that I had already figured out. So ultimately I put a two in front of AL203 and that allowed me to have an even number of oxygen atoms, six, so I could balance them on the left. Put a three in front of O2 to get six oxygens on each side. And we're balanced. Uh, there. So um, in, in this, in, in the slide example here, the even odd problem was noticed right away. So a two was put here to give six oxygen so that there would be an even number on the right side. And then you could balance the oxygens with a three here. And then you could balance the aluminums by having two times two, it's four, put a four here and balance it. So either way, whether you notice the even odd problem right away and account for it by like putting a two here to give us an even number of oxygens on the right so that we can be the same as the left, we can only have an even number of oxygens, or if you figure it out in the middle and you double what you've already done, 
Both of those ways will get you to the right answer. So you don't have to know right away. Okay. So that was a, a simpler example. What if we have a more complex example like this one here? So here, uh, this is also going to be an even odd problem. Uh, so here we're going to be using both tip two, one and tip two, both of them in this problem. First of all, for our uh, oxygen, we want to balance this last. Why? Because oxygen appears in more than one spot. Also, we're going to find that we end up with an even odd problem. I'll just tell you right now. But again, I'm going to, I'm going to go based on the fact that you don't recognize it right away. I will tell you that you could because if you have an odd number here, like one, you're going to end up with an odd number of oxygens on the right side. Like here, if these are one and one, we have two plus one, three oxygens. We can never have three oxygens on the left uh, because the fact that there's a two here. If we put a one, we'll have two oxygens. If we put a two, we'll have four. And so we might notice it right away and try to put an even number there. But we don't have to. What we can do is we can just start balancing and fix it when we realize there's a problem. So we've got three types of atoms here. We've got carbon, we've got hydrogen, and we've got oxygen. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Okay. And so I'm going to give my subscripts colors again. I'm going to give this one a red. I give this one a blue, this one a red, this one a blue. And I can set up my stuff. So carbon is only in the C6H14. And so the amount of carbon atoms will only depend on the red coefficient. Uh, hydrogen is also only in C6H14 on the left side. So its number will only depend on the red coefficient. The oxygen is only in the O2. So the number of oxygens will only depend on the blue coefficient here. Okay, and on the right side, the carbon is only in the CO2, so it will only depend on the red coefficient. The hydrogen is only in the water, so it will only depend on the blue coefficient. Um, I'm gonna move that up a little bit. And the oxygen, uh, will depend on both the red and the blue coefficient because it's in the CO2 and the water. And so it will depend on the red and it will depend on the blue. In terms of what we're multiplying these numbers by, uh, we multiply them by the subscripts. So we multiply the red coefficient by six to get the number of carbon atoms times six. Uh, times 14 to get the number of hydrogen atoms because that's its subscript and then for the oxygen it's times 2. Now on the right side here uh, for the red subscript and carbon it's going to be the red subscript times 1. For the hydrogen it's going to be the blue subscript or it's blue coefficient times its subscript 2. And then for the oxygen it's going to be the red subscript times 2 plus the blue, subscript, the blue coefficient times its subscript 1. Okay. So again, uh, I just like to kind of take a look and see where it looks like there's more of one atom. Like here it looks like there's more carbons in this side. So I'm going to try to balance by at making a bigger number on this side. Uh, so I'll start by assuming that this number here is 1. 1. Uh, so 1 times 6, that's going to give me 6 carbon atoms. Uh, and so here I'm going to want a 6. If I put a 6, then I get 6 times 1. That equals uh, 6 carbon atoms. So our carbons are balanced, for now anyway. Uh, again, use pencil here because you never know when you're going to have to go back and erase. So uh, we have a 1 for our red subscript on the left. So that gives us 14 hydrogens. And if we want to have 14 hydrogens on the right, we're going to need a number here that multiplies with 2 to get 14. So that number is going to be 7. 
7 times 2 is 14. Okay, now we've got coefficients on the right side, so we can plug those in, 6 and 7. So our number of oxygen is going to be 6 times 2, that's 12, plus 7 times 1, that's 7 more. So that's a total of 19 oxygens. That's 6 times 2, which is 12, plus 7 times 1, which is 7. So 12 plus 7, that's 19. Now, the problem is, there's no number that we can put here that's going to give us 19 oxygens. If we put... 9, we'll have 18, but if we put 10, we'll have 20. So there's nothing we can do. So what we have to do is, it looks like we've got an even odd problem, okay? Because there's no, no whole number we can put here to get this odd number of oxygens. We can only have even number of oxygens. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the coefficients that we already had, and we're going to double them. So we're going to take this uh, 1 here and we're going to make it a 2. Two, two, two. So that's going to give us 2 times 6, 12 carbons, and 2 times 14, 28 hydrogens. Okay. We're also going to double the ones on the right. So we're going to double the 6. And we're going to make it a 12. And make the 6 a 12. Uh, and we're going to make the 7 a 14. We're going to recount our atoms. So the 7 is now going to be a 14. 14, 14, 14. Okay. So now we're going to have on this side 12 times 1, that's 12 carbons. We're going to have 14 times 2, that's 28 hydrogens. And then for oxygen, we're going to have, I'm going to write what we have on the side here, 12 times 2, that's 24, plus 14 times 1, that's 14. So we're going to have a total of 38 oxygens. And so now we have an even number of oxygens. So we can get an even number of oxygens on the right. We need the number that multiplies by 2 to get 38. That would be 19. 19 times 2 is 38. And so now we're balanced. So as you can see, the numbers can get big. When the numbers get a little big, you should always go back and double check that you can't divide them by a like 2 or 3. Because sometimes when you're guessing, it's easy to get your numbers too big, but it's really important that you use the smallest possible numbers that will work. So fortunately, nothing you can't divide 19 by anything except 19. So this must be the lowest numbers that we can get. So we, we, we got six carbons on each side, but it didn't work, right? And 14 hydrogens finally balanced the oxygen, but there was an odd number on the product side. So we did, doubled what was done, and when we did, we got... Our result here 12 carbons on each side 2 times 6 12 times 1 that's 12 28 hydrogens 2 times 14 is 28 14 times 2 28 and 38 oxygens 19 times 2 that's 38 and 12 times 2 is 24 plus 14 times 1 24 plus 14 is 38 so the numbers can get big sometimes but again always double check at the end and make sure you can't divide through by two or three because you want the lowest possible numbers that will work and sometimes again when you guess the numbers start growing but they really shouldn't be as high as that so always double check at the end but these are the lowest numbers that we can get to make this work finally my last tip for you while balancing chemical equations is this Sometimes in a chemical equation, you'll have a polyatomic ion that remains unchanged from both sides. So only if the polyatomic ion remains the same on both sides, you can balance it as a whole group. So here we have uh, 
we have a hydroxide, but there's no hydroxide on the other side. So we're not gonna balance the hydroxide as a group. But what we do have is we have phosphate, PO4, and we have two phosphates over here. So since phosphate stayed the same on both sides, we can balance that phosphate as a chunk and then balance the other oxygens uh, that are not in the phosphate separately. This can make things a lot easier for you. Notice here for the oxygens, there's oxygen in the zinc hydroxide, there's oxygen in the phosphoric acid, there's oxygen in the zinc phosphate, and there's oxygen in the water. There's oxygen everywhere. And so it could be really, really hard to balance the oxygens. But if you balance the phosphates as a group and then balance the rest of the oxygen separately, that can make things a lot easier. So there's the same polyatomic ions on both sides. It's the phosphate. So we're going to balance the phosphate here as a chunk. Okay. Uh, and so let's start to balance here. Um, I'm I've got a, I'm going to have to kind of split this a little bit uh, more sideways because I don't have a lot of room. So I'm going to do my zincs over here, uh, and I'm going to do uh, then I'll do my phosphate. Okay, uh, and then I'll put my hydrogens right here and my oxygens right here, and I'll do the same thing here. I'll put my zinc here, my phosphate here, and then my hydrogens here and my oxygens here. And these are the oxygens that are not in the phosphate, not in PO4, okay? The ones that are not in the PO4 because we're gonna balance those separately. Okay, and so as usual, I'm going to give my, uh, I'm gonna give some colors to my subscripts here. Red one for this one, blue one for this one, red one for this one, blue one for this one. And so the zinc here is only going to depend on the red subscript. And the phosphate will only depend on the blue subscript. Or not the blue subscript, the blue coefficient rather. Uh, and then the hydrogen, uh, that's going to depend on the red and the blue on the left side. So there's hydrogens here and there's hydrogens here. Okay, so we're gonna have red and we're gonna have blue for this one. Uh, the oxygen that's not in the phosphate, so there's oxygens here in the phosphate, but the oxygen that's not in the phosphate is only gonna depend on the red coefficient. Then on this side, the zinc will uh, only depend on here what the red coefficient is. The phosphate will also only depend on the red. The hydrogen will only depend on the blue. It's only in, whoops, uh, I'm gonna erase that. It's uh, only in the water. And so it's only going to depend on the blue. And the oxygen here that's not in the phosphate is also only going to depend on the blue coefficient. The rest of the oxygens are a part of the phosphate. So we're gonna balance those separately. So let's deal with the zinc. Uh, on the left side here, the zinc has a subscript of one, and so we'll multiply the red coefficient times one to get the number of zinc atoms. And on the right side, the zinc has a subscript of three, and so we'll multiply the zinc times three to get the number of zinc atoms. So if both of these were one, there'd be three zincs on the right and one zinc on the left. So uh, I definitely want this one to be the big, that's gonna be the bigger number. So I'm gonna put a one here for now. So one, if this is a one, then I'll have three zincs. And if then uh, for them to balance on this side, the zinc, uh, the number will have to be three. Three, because three times one will give us three zincs. Okay. Now for the phosphate, remember to count the phosphate as a chunk. So this is one phosphate chunk here, right? And these are just two means there's two of this whole phosphate chunk. And so if my number here, which I've already determined is one, uh, now I'm gonna multiply that times two, which is the, the subscript outside of the phosphate. This means two phosphates. And so that's going to give me two uh, PO4s. 
And so if I want to have two PO4s on the left, I'm going to need a two for my coefficient here because I have only one phosphate. If I had more than one, there'd be parentheses around it with a subscript outside. So uh, my, my multiple here will be times one because there's no, it's not like this one where there's two of them, there's only one. But I'm gonna multiply by two here. So two times one is gonna give me two phosphates. Now at this point, I've already figured out all my coefficients. Uh, now in counting the hydrogen, so this is something that's a little bit more difficult when you're counting atoms that are within a polyatomic ion. So let me explain that. We're gonna fill in our coefficients first here. It's going to be three for the hydrogen and two for the blue one. Now, here's where it's tricky. To count these ones, you're going to do three times two times one for the hydrogen. Here is why. I'm going to write it on the side. So if I've got three zinc hydroxides, what I each of these zinc hydroxides has one zinc and it has two hydroxides. And the zinc is two plus if we're writing out the ions. The hydroxide is, is one minus. So each one of these zinc hydroxide has two hydroxides in it. And we've got three of them all together. So our number of hydrogens is one, two, three, four, five, six. The way we get that as a shortcut to multiply by the coefficients is three times two times one. Why? Because we have three zinc hydroxides. Each one of them has two hydroxides and each hydroxide has one hydrogen. So the way we calculate the hydrogens is three times two times one. So that's gonna be three uh, three times two times one. Okay, and then we're gonna to add to that here two times three, two times three. So this is going to be 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, plus 2 times 3 is 6 more. That's 12 hydrogens. So to have 12 hydrogens on the right, let's see. My hydrogens only depend on my blue subscript. So it's going to be the or blue coefficient, rather. So it's going to be the blue coefficient times the subscript, which is 2 times 2. So in order to get 12 hydrogens, I'm going to need a 6 here because 6 times 2 gives me 12 hydrogens. And now we're going to count the oxygens that are not in the PO4, so not these oxygens. Well here the oxygens not in the PO4 are just in the water. I can count either of these first, but the water is a bit easier. It's just six times one, uh, six, and then times the subscript here, which is one, so times one, that is six oxygens. Now for the count the oxygen in here, we're gonna use the same strategy we used for the hydrogen. The, the, coefficient, or the coefficient here is three, and to count the oxygens, we do three, times two times one. Why? Because we have three zinc hydroxides, each has two hydroxides, and each hydroxide has one oxygen. Three times two times one, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three times two times one, that is six oxygens. So, to summarize, now we're balanced, 
We have three zincs on each side, two phosphates on each side, two times one of phosphate, one times two phosphates. Uh, for oxygen, we have three times two times one, six oxygens. Here, six times one, six oxygens. Then for hydrogens, we have six times two, 12 hydrogens. And here, three times two times one, that's six hydrogens, plus two times three, that's another six, 12 hydrogens. And that is the balanced equation. Okay. And so those are the three tips for balancing chemical equations. I've shown you quite a few examples here. Uh, there's more in the homework. And so go ahead and give those a shot. And, uh, and so balancing chemical equations will be really important as we move forward. So I hope this was helpful and use the homeworks to practice. Also, uh, in your textbook, chapter 4.1, there are even more examples with answers. So I encourage you that if you've done the homework ones I've given you and balanced all those and you still feel like you need some practice, I would encourage you to go into the example problems in your textbook, chapter 4.1, and try some of those and compare your answers to those ones until you're feeling confident that you're getting the right answers. Uh, and so that's it for balancing equations, and I will see you guys in the next lecture.